and I'm out of my part of living there. Yeah. We don't understand why I think that one, but they didn't. And it seemed like there are other people that can do it. Go from one thing to the next, and that'll never happen. But I always think maybe that'll happen on the right to me. But anyway, I, I got this. I'm going to read this right here in the mouth. Get away. I read this on the front porch today. And it says, uh, John chapter 14, and they have in you. I read the Bible and I ain't talking to you. It's in the Bible, I believe it's coming into the earth. But this is, uh, it's in John 14, so the first verse. Let my poor heart be true. You believe in God, you believe in all the other names. In my, in my father's house, for many mansions, it was not so on the throne. I go to the third place with him. And if I go to the third place with you, will you find some in it and receive you into my cell? That's where I am, going to the house. Brother, I'll go to the house and, and the way of me. And I said, if they are nothing else in this world, that's a promise that we were going to die. And I'm looking forward to that. Yeah. I don't want to knock down the story. I don't want to live it for a long time. But I don't fear that. If I don't have to, that doesn't come to me. Why not? Sooner or later, we're going to leave this world. So, uh, the only thing is we're going to be the first place. And I'm glad I'm not the first place. That makes sense.
pray for us. Pray for the church and uh, each and every one that's in the church that we might be able to do the Lord's will in our life. Each and every one of us. Uh, the Lord's got a will for each and every one of us. I know that it's also a will is for us to be saved, but after he saves us, he gives us he gives us things to do. And, and I pray that every one of them to Good to see you this morning. Again, we go to John 14. That's what the Lord does up. That's what the Lord does up. And then my heart is saying, it's not right. And I pray that if there's someone here this morning that comes home and it's lost today, I, I pray that he gives them up this morning that they, they get an opportunity to do that. Good to be here. Good to see you. Johnny, I have several requests this morning. church member of my family and I had an uncle who passed away this morning at four o'clock. I can remember his children are taking it really hard and, and uh, remember us there'll be quite a few of us traveling this week. Just remember us.
Honey, I have many requests, and I'd like to share some more with my sister in law.
And all you don't have to do is accept what he has for you. Maybe you're here this morning. I'm just all the Lord about it. Maybe you're here this morning. I don't know if you're different. Not where the Lord would have you be or something like that. I know that you've been saved, but know that you're not living the life that you all will. I'm thankful that the Lord will meet us there too. Sometimes, you know, with this old man that I put on there today, this old human part, he'll, he may hold a grudge. But now I'm thankful that the Lord will hold me in grudge, thank you. Do you think about that this morning? The Lord will hold me in grudge. And yeah, he may not let you uh, just walk in the church this morning and, uh, and rejoice with him. He may give you a little, a little leg striking if you'll have it in a while. Or something maybe. I don't know. But I know that he don't hold grudge and he'll, and if you'll obey him, uh, you can get exactly where the Lord would have to be. And we're thankful that uh, he's forgiven this morning. Uh, every one of us. And, uh, our Sunday school teacher talked about asking for forgiveness every day. And I, I dare say that there's not any of us in here that shouldn't ask for forgiveness every day. Because we, we surely come up short when it comes to things of the Lord. You may disagree with me on that, but it's alright. So it's between you and your Lord. And uh, you don't have to have a preacher to tell you what's wrong. Now, he may reaffirm or help uh, in that way, just as we understand that Nathan went to David and told him that thou art the man. But I believe David knew ahead of time. But uh, the Lord may use somebody to help you along, but when it's all, it comes down to it, it's actually between you and the Lord. But I'd like for you to turn this morning, if you want to, to the book of Mark, and chapter 5, it looks like. We're going to read about three or four verses there. And we preach through it, and in it, and out of it, and inside of it, and everything else. And, uh, but never would have thought that we have this morning, but we have preached through this scripture before. We're going to use just three or four verses this morning. And I, I thought about a word, and I wrote it down this morning to a Sunday school teacher, and he says that uh, things of this world are not good enough. And that sort of goes with, with a thought this morning. Things of the world are not good enough. And I thought about having to come to a point where we've tried everything else. And the Lord has to get us in a position where, where that we have to look up to, to Him. And, and you know, if you're here today and you don't know you're lost, well, you don't need to say you're do you? Maybe, uh, maybe somebody told you that in Sunday school or something, how Jesus died for you, but if you've never, if the gospel's never come and dug you up, you really don't know that you're lost. But I'll tell you what, one day that the Lord came my way and He showed me where I stood with Him. And He let me know what I needed. And as we read in the scripture, I believe that I came to the lowest point that I've ever come in my life. Yeah. I don't know how much, and we always want to put a natural something to it. Now, I wasn't in prison at the time, and I don't know, I probably probably had a dollar or two in my pocket, so it wouldn't grow. But the Lord brought me down to the lowest point in my life that, that I might be able to look up. Yeah. And I might be able to to look and see how great he was. You know, I pray this morning. I, I really do. I, I don't know uh, how you may see it or how you may think, but I, I pray that if, if there's a need here this morning like that, I pray that the Lord takes you down to a bottom that you have to look up. And you have to and you don't have to make a decision today what you want to do about it. And you know, sometimes we've tried everything, we we wanted to fix it, and, they, and a lot of these men, and I know them. I well in here and they're they're good with their hands and good with what they do. And, and it's a thing with a man that uh, we don't want to, we don't want to ask for much help. We want to fix it ourselves. And we want to put our hands on it, we want to fix it. But these things that come with the Lord that we just can't fix. And it takes him to fix it today. I, I these things in your life that I can't fix. But I guarantee you, I don't, I don't know uh, the mile that anybody is walking today or the step that they're walking 
that you're walking in your shoes this morning, but I, I, I've got, I've got, uh, I, I know that the Lord can help you, whatever it may be this morning. No matter where you may be, you may be down and out today, but I'm thankful to know that my Lord, He's, He's got all power in heaven and earth, and and He can help you there wherever you may be this morning, whatever it may be. If we just get to a place that we're willing. And I know there's a lot of times and, and I prayed and I and I told you about it being being in a shape that I knew was lost, but the Lord wasn't calling and, and I would pray a little prayer anyway and, and I knew it wasn't going anywhere, but then I'd pray and it it sort of hit this old man just a little bit, but I mean, I'm glad if the Lord come one day and he showed me where I was and, and he put me down and, and he let me lift my eyes up and look toward heaven and, and when I called him on him that time. And I pray this morning that's that's that you'll get to that place today. That you'll get to Mark chapter 5 and, and verse 25. And the Bible says, And a certain woman which had an issue of blood 12 years, heard from every scripture, and had suffered many things of many positions, and spent all that she had. Uh, but was nothing better, but the Bible says, but rather grew worse. And uh, she had, when, when she had heard of Jesus, she uh, uh, came in and pressed behind and, and touched his garments, the Bible says. And, and verse 28 says, For she said, If I may uh, but touch his, his clothes, I shall be whole. And in verse 29, and the Bible says that uh, straightway the fountain of her blood was dried up. and uh, she fell in her body that uh, that she was healed uh, uh, after that after the, that plague. But I thought about how that uh, she come to a point in her life after uh, the Bible says twelve years here that uh, she came to a point in her life that uh, she thought she would decide that, uh, to try Jesus after a while. And in my little Peter and mine this morning thought about uh, had you not heard of him before, or uh, had you not prayed before somewhere? Uh, what was the issue that uh, she went all that time? And, and I think of me and you this morning, and, and I think I have her hard headed sometimes. And, and the Lord tried to lead us and guide us, and, and we want to do anything other than try the Lord in our life. And, and maybe you're here this morning, and, and you may say, My preacher, I've got all these things going on, and, and I'm living pretty good. And, and how many and, and I know that the Bible says oh, there's pleasure in sin for a season. I'm going to lay out to you this morning. If the Lord gives you an opportunity to that, you ought to try Him. You ought to try Him. Because you know, as that woman, as she was in that crowd and, and she reached out and, and touched the hem of His garment or touched the piece of His clothes, you know, and the Lord may not always be passing by. When you need to reach out and touch him. And, and I thought about how that uh, the Bible says she spent all she had uh, trying to search after some help. And, and she tried many things. And, and I know today uh, uh, we've tried to fix this old man up. We, we've tried to work on him before. Uh, we've tried to change things before. But I'll tell you what, until Jesus came into my life, there's nothing ever really changed. Yeah, I might clean him up a little bit. Just for a little while. Oh, none of that stuff ever worked. None of it ever worked. You know what I thought about this morning? Maybe we cut her hair and shaved her face and, and done some things to make us more presentable. Brother Mike, but you know that never worked. Not, not when it comes to things in my soul, that never worked. But I'm glad that one day that I humbled my heart and, and I found an old place to pray and the Lord moved me there. And then when He moved me there, He set His abode up in my life. I began to look just a little bit different. I began to act just a little bit different. All in that old, that old filthy mouth began to act just a little bit different. And my actions and where I went and what I wanted to do. When the Lord came in and He saved me, I found that stuff passed away. I didn't want to do it anymore. Didn't want to do it. But you know what? It took the Lord to put me in a place one day. It took the Lord to break me to where I had to look up and, and after I tried it all and thought I had it all figured out and all those things I realized that uh, that boy that was there, that uh, there was only one thing that could fill in. It. it wasn't a million dollars. It wasn't a billion dollars. It was Jesus Christ Himself. Mm -hmm. The only thing that could fill 
it. We may want to get married and get us a spouse. Or we, want, we may want to make more money. or We may want to come to church and even go through the action. We may want to sit in the pews every Sunday, every Wednesday, every Sunday night. But I'll tell you what, until you come down to a lower point and you decide that you need Jesus in your life, there will always be a link there. There will always be a link. But I thought this morning, but I doubt that she had tried it out. And I thought about how that she had spent it out. And I thought how so much and this relates to you and I today. Yeah. To you and I. Now, I don't know. I, I thought about how for 12 years did she not have an opportunity to meet Jesus. And I thought about did she never pray and to do those things. But there's a point there that the Lord got her attention. There's a point that she knew. And I believe it's by the leading of the Holy Spirit, you might say, well, uh, it never had come until the day of Pentecost. Well, I believe that the Lord had the lead in her mind. She came to a point to know if she could only but touch Him. Now I think about that still small voice this morning. And I think that when the Lord, the preacher can say a whole lot of things and you can say a whole lot of things to me. And until the Lord leads in my life and in your life, and we come to a point that we know that we need Him. And whatever it may be, whatever decision it may be, you, you may be buying a house or a car, and why don't you pray about it? Why don't you consider Jesus this morning? Man, before you do any of those things. Well, that's natural, preacher. Well, I think we ought to consider Him every day. I believe we ought to pray every day. For the things that come in our life. Well, you pray. You, you pray. You, you perfect this morning. Oh, I'm a long way from it. I'm a long way from it. See, I work on this man every day. If the Lord works on him every day, I pray every day. And if I'm right, Brother Terry, I, I'm asking forgiveness for my shortcomings every day. Yeah. Every day. <laughs> I want to be on my back looking up toward heaven with my mind on the right stuff. I want to consider Jesus this morning. I want to, I want to be a friend of Him today and not go a long, long ways down the road as we we understand. 12 years down the road, that's a pretty good ways to go. Trying everything, spending everything, doing everything. Without first ever. I want to try Jesus. Oh my God, Jesus. And you know, I thought about how that her faith made her hope. Her faith fixed that up. You know what this morning? There's no difference in this house today. For me and you, our faith can make us hope to die. That's what it takes this morning for me to be saved or you to be saved is faith. Yeah, I got saved a long time ago that I, I come by faith. I had faith that the Lord saved me. I had faith that when I when I got up off of that old altar, after I cried out to Him, and you all know by my testimony so many times, that I got up there with no anyone else in the room. Then. Naturally. But you know the Lord was there. He met me in that room. Praise the Lord that he did. He wasn't in there with the, that robe and sandals and no. Through my his Holy Spirit, he was in the room with me. And he assured me that he saved me. Now I, I like what our teacher said this morning. He said I had to I had to figure out later that he put on that, that robe. He, he clothed me in that royal robe. White See, I didn't know that. I, he had to. I had to learn later that he sealed me up through by his spirit. He sealed me until the day of redemption. If you read the book of Ephesians, 
He sealed me up. See, I didn't understand that, but I knew I was saved. Yeah. I knew that without a shadow of that. When I got up, the Lord was saved. You know why? Because I came to a point in my life where I tried everything else, just like her. Everything else. And I decided I was going to try Jesus. I was going to consider Him. Now, there ain't no difference this morning in, in me or even go all the way back to her. Yeah. There's no difference this morning. We all need to consider Him. Consider Him in our lives. Consider the work that He has to do in our lives this morning. And had suffered many positions and had spent all that she had in there's nothing there that had to be worse. Nothing there that had to be worse. Anybody here in that shape this morning? You tried what the world had to offer? Or, or rather say, things of the world are not good enough. Not even able to put his name on one thing. Things of this world is not good enough this morning. But I'll tell you what, friends of my Lord and my Savior, we're, we're good enough to We're good enough to heal this morning right here. To heal. Thank you, Lord. We're good enough this morning to make you, my To heal you. And I thought about something that she had done. You know, I told you how she just spent all she had and tried everything and there was nothing bad. She comes to a point in life to begin to seek the Lord. Ain't nothing different this morning and that scripture. We all have to seek. We all have to seek. And if we never seek, if we ever not. Today, I guess I'm going to ask you, do you see? This lady, like, she tried it all, and maybe some of it isn't here. I don't understand exactly what I'm talking about. Yeah. She tried it all. Lord, let you come to church this morning. Well, I come because so and so asked me to say, right? I believe we're going to on that too. I believe the Lord gives us that. It's the line of the intervention and the call that we might come. Consider him to say, if I can only touch, I love that. I believe that's what he did when I touched. It's close. If I can only touch this man, you'll seek him, I believe you'll find him. That's a little message I'm going to ask him if they'll give us a song of invitation. I don't have to. I don't have to work it up on the Three, one, one. Watch that I'm going to let the Lord work with it today. But I'm going to trust in Him and that He'll give you exactly what you need this morning. I'm going to trust in Him that He's, he's brought you to a point that you haven't to look up and, and you realize in your life that you're lost and undone and, and without Him you'll, you'll go to hell and, and perish with all of those that of unbelief. But I'm thankful this morning that uh, when the Lord showed me that I was lost that I was able to begin to work on how uh, uh, to fix that problem. And if you don't know that today, I will have the Lord to show you. And, and when He shows you, it's up to you whether or not you fix it or not. It's up to you. She began to see. Bitch. She began to, you know, put it in right now. You can see. Oh, she comes to that point. Now, maybe he deals back, back up those 12 years, maybe the Lord never did give her an opportunity to see that. I don't know. I don't know. That's something to think about. And I'm thankful that it's recorded that when she did come to that point in her life, that she didn't really see that. And I came to that point in my life that I didn't get to see that. Yes. And when I was 21, 22 years old, 25, somewhere in there, I probably see that. But I'm glad that I come to a point 
That's up to you about what you do with it. I ask you that you stand and as they sing the song. Have you tried it all? I don't know how I win. I don't want to try it. I'm not talking about hell. 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 Lord, 
be in the midst. But right now I'm glad that that goes with us out there somewhere. And the Lord will bring it to our recollection. He deals with you. If you're laying on your couch watching one every football game on the day, I pray that you click it off and get down there and try out to. That's the way to fix it up. You got me like a wild family. I'd love to hear it. Trust me, love to hear it. But you try all that you can. And then you start it. And the Lord makes you in that last part. I appreciate that. I wonder if anybody's got this in my honey word or something on your heart to help me. I'll tell you how good place to be. That scripture reminds me of my salvation. But I got to the point where I was the world to do, I had to go, I was trying to think deeply. You know, and, and the part about being made holes. But it's just a part of the man went up there because I had these holes. But when Christ moved in, he made me holes. I love everyone. Appreciate that. Good testimony this morning. What else today? Thank you. 